thank you very much thank you very much So in today's class, I'll be introducing some basic concepts in chemistry. So in today's class, we'll be learning on some basic concepts in chemistry. And the first of them will be on atoms, molecules, ions, and radicals. Atoms is the smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. So what does that statement actually mean? Now watch, watch. Atom is the smallest particle of what class? Yeah. An element. Very nice. Did we say atom is the smallest particle of a compound? No. We said atom is the smallest particle of what? An element. And we already know some basic elements, like the likes of hydrogen. So looking at hydrogen, is hydrogen an element? Yes. So the point here is this. Atom is the smallest particle of an element. And what is the chemical symbol of hydrogen class? H. So whenever you see a particular symbol as this, how will you pronounce it? Will you say it is called hydrogen atom or hydrogen molecule? Hydrogen atom. Yes, because anything that has to do with atom will be ascribed to what? Element. So the point here is this. Atom is the smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. So whatever symbol we see in chemistry, our mind tells us that that symbol is that element atom. Are you getting me now? So in this case, we are using hydrogen. And what's the symbol of hydrogen class? H. So what will you pronounce it? Is it hydrogen atom or hydrogen molecule? Hydrogen atom. Very nice. So I want to bring some popular elements here, like the likes of chlorine. And what is the symbol of chlorine class? CL. So how will you pronounce this symbol when you see it? Chlorine atom. So let's move over to other elements like likes of phosphorus. Now looking at phosphorus, what's the symbol? P. So how will you pronounce it? Phosphorus atom. Is it phosphorus molecule? No. So whenever you see a particular symbol standing alone, you call it that element's atom. I believe it is clear now. So let us proceed to molecules. Okay, now, looking over to the next term, which is called molecule. From what I told you guys, class, what is a molecule? Now, from what you guys just said, summarily, it must be noted that a molecule is made up of at least two atoms. Now, listen to what I said. Look at what I said. I said a molecule is made up of at least, how many atom class? Two, two atoms. atoms. So for we to get a molecule, we need at least how many atoms? Two, two atoms. atoms. So it means that we can have three atoms forming a molecule, four atoms forming a molecule, five atoms forming a molecule. Now, the point here is this. A molecule is made up of at least two atoms. Now, let's take an example. Using same hydrogen, I believe, class, whenever you see a symbol, H, what will you call this? How will you pronounce? Is it hydrogen atom or hydrogen molecule now? Hydrogen atom. Very nice. So, what I said, I told you guys that a, mole sorry, a molecule is made up of at least how many atoms? Two atoms. Let's say we are having two atoms of hydrogen. This is one atom of hydrogen, and this is another atom of hydrogen. So when I condense both of them, when I join them together, I have something as H2. Yes, now, will I have H3? No. Because how many atoms are you seeing of hydrogen? Two. So I will have what? H2. So whenever you see H2, how will you pronounce it? Will you pronounce it as hydrogen atom now, or hydrogen molecule class? Hydrogen molecule. I believe the concept is clear. Now, moving over to chlorine, we use earlier to be the atomic state of chlorine because this is chlorine atom, because it's just chlorine as an element. Now, moving over to the next example, using same chlorine, Cl. Now, when chlorine is bonding to another chlorine atom, this is one chlorine atom and this is another chlorine atom. Now, when these two chlorine atoms are bonding together, what do you think we have? Is it Cl2 or Cl3? Cl2. Cl2. There's not like Cl3. Are you getting me now? So, looking at this, is it pronounced as Chlorine atom or chlorine molecule class? Chlorine molecule. 
I believe the concept is clear. Now, class, moving over to the next term, which I call... Ions. Now, looking at ions, what are ions? This is simply a charge Very nice. Now, look at what I said. Ions. This is simply a what? Charged atom. Did I say this is simply a charged molecule? No. So for we to get an ion, what do we need? An atom. We don't need molecule. Now let's take an example. This is hydrogen. And class, it must be noted that hydrogen is positively charged. You have to take note of that. Hydrogen is what charge, class? Positive charge. So now the point here is this. Let's say we are having H+. plus. Because I said earlier that hydrogen is what? Positive charge. So here it becomes what? H plus. So let me be specific. This plus is just one. So what charge? Is not plus one? Yes. So now look at what I said. Let me write this and let me write this. H2 plus one. Now which do you think will be correct from what we just said? Ions. They are simply charged atoms. Did we say they are simply charged molecules? Which one is existing in the atomic state and which one is existing in its atomic state? The first one, right? Yeah. So this will be correct. Not this. This is not even correct at all. This cannot be correct. Because I am seeing a what now? A molecular form of hydrogen. Because whenever we have two... How many atoms of hydrogen can you see here, class? H and H. And we said that for we to get an ion, we need a what? A charged atom. An atom with a charge. And now, in this context, hydrogen is what charge? Positive charge. So, to be specific, what type of ion is hydrogen? Is it called a cation or an anion? Because I told you guys that for an ion to be positive charge, it must what now? For, for we to have a cation, that ion must what now? Positive charge. Are you getting the point now? So, moving over to the next example. Moving over to the next example, I'll be using chlorine, for example. And this is chlorine atom, and this is chlorine molecule. And chlorine is negative charge. And same applies to this. Which do you think will be correct? A or B? So, this is not correct, right? Because I told you guys that for we to get an ion, we need a what? A charged atom. And this is existing in what state? The atomic state. Hope is clear. So that is for that. So let's quickly move over to the next term. Okay, now, moving over to the last term, which I call? Radicals. So class, what are radicals? This is simply group of atoms behaving as a single charge. Now class, let's understand what we just said. I said, this is simply a group of atoms behaving as a single charge. Did we, did we say groups of molecules? No. We said groups of atoms behaving as a single charge unit. That means these atoms, they are many, and they have one particular charge. There's a particular charge holding all of these atoms together. Now, let me explain what I mean. Now, class, this is C. What element is C? Carbon. What element is C, class? Carbon. Let's say this is carbon, and this is oxygen, this is oxygen, and this is another oxygen. And all of these atoms I'm seeing are held together by a particular charge, and that charge is 2 minus. We are coming there. Or you simply say what now, minus 2. Now, class, this element you are seeing in this format, is it existing in this, in this atomic state or molecular state? Atomic state, because you're just seeing one carbon. Are you getting me now? Now, looking at O, is it atomic state or molecular state? Atomic state, because it's just O. Atomic state. Atomic state. Are you not seeing the charge holding them together? So, class, how do we get a radical? We simply compress them together. So, I'm having how many carbon, class? One. How many oxygen atoms can you see in this, in this uh, radical? Theory. So it means that I'm to write O3. Are you getting me now? With a charge holding them. How was that charge? I hope it's clear. You can say minus 2 or 2 minus. Are you getting me now? As the case may be. Meanwhile, this radical we've gotten has a name. And it is called the carbonate radical. This radical has a name, class. What was it called? The carbonate radical. So I'll be writing some examples here, and some persons will come out and tell us the answers. I'll be asking some students here to compress these um, atoms to form a radical, okay? So the first person you do for the first radical you are seeing here, the way it's been done here, so you provide for this one. So it will be solving the first radical. 
So let's see what, what it's doing now. You compress it. So class, from what um, Olelua did, is it correct? Yes. Is it correct? Yes. So let's clap for him. The next person, the next person. Olelua, you hold on. So you'll be doing for this other radical. Very, very correct. So let's clap for her. And lastly, um, Nathaniel. He's, do, he's doing from this um, last radical. Very, very correct. So let's clap for them. Let's clap for them. So you guys can go to your seat. So class, you can see all of the radicals that they have formed. These radicals, they have names that are allocated to them. Now, you can see the first radical. This radical is called the nitrate radical. This radical is called the what class? Nitrate. nitrate radical. Now, looking at the other radical, this radical is called the ammonium radical. Okay, it is called the ammonium radical. I did not say ammonia radical. There's nothing like that. It is called what class? Ammonium oh. radical. And lastly, this radical has a name, and it's called what? Sulfate radical. It is called the sulfate radical. So you have to take note of their names. So I can believe now you understand the concepts about atoms, molecules, ions, and radicals. So that is for that. So let's quickly move over to the next concept, which is how to calculate the relative molecular mass of a compound. Understanding this concept will be very, very important here. So that's what we'll be learning now. Okay, guys, so the next concept we'll be explaining is on how to calculate relative molecular mass of a compound. Repeat after me. How to calculate relative molecular mass of a compound. Very nice. So that's what we'll be explaining now. And to do that, it's very easy. To do that is very, very easy. So first of all, I have to write some um, some substances on the board. So let me see if you guys understand the concept of atoms, molecules, ions, and radicals. So let us go, class. So the first I'll be writing here is this. Now, class, what element is this? It's called sulfur. Now, looking at sulfur, is it existing in its atomic state or molecular state? Atomic. atomic state. Because it's just standing alone. Are you getting me now? So what about this guy? Which is What element is this, first of all? Nitrogen. So what do you think, what, what do you think is happening here? Is nitrogen existing in its atomic state or molecular state? Because how many nitrogen can you see here? Two. Because I told you guys that for a molecule to be formed, we need at least how many atoms? Two atoms. So looking at this, I'm having at least just two atoms of nitrogen. So that is why this will be called a molecule. Meanwhile, what about this? Oxygen. Now looking at oxygen, how many atoms of oxygen can you see here? Two. So will this guy be called oxygen atom or oxygen molecule? Very nice. Now, looking at this other one, how many atoms of oxygen can you see? Three, which is OOO. That's for the symbol of oxygen. Are you getting me now? Meanwhile, looking at this, what will this guy be called? Will it be called oxygen molecule or oxygen atom? Oxygen, oxygen molecule. molecule. Because I told you guys that for we to get a molecule, we need at least how many atoms? Two atoms. So it means that a molecule can be formed from Three atoms, four atoms, five atoms, like that, as the case may be. Now, to be specific or to differentiate between them, we simply say this is basically called dioxygen. This is basically called what class? Dioxygen. Why is it called dioxygen? Because we're having two oxygen. Are you getting me now? Meanwhile, this is called trioxygen, but popularly called ozone. Are you getting me now? This is called trioxygen, popularly called ozone. Moving over to this concept, first of all, how do we get a compound? It must be not because we'll be learning how to calculate what? Relative molecular mass of a compound. So the first question we ask ourselves, how do we get a compound? It must be noted that a compound is made up of various elements. Different elements coming together, we get a compound. Now, this is one element. And this is another element. What is the symbol of this element class? H. 
And what is the symbol of this element? CL. So when these two elements come together, they form what class? A compound. And what is the name of this compound? Or what is the nature of this compound? Is it an acid or a base? An acid is something you must know. This is an acid. But to be specific, it is called hydrochloric acid. Why is it called hydrochloric acid? You can see it now from hydrogen, hydro, and chloric. That's how they got hydrochloric acid. So that is the nature of this compound. Now, how do you calculate the relative molecular mass of a compound? You have to know the atomic masses of these elements. How many elements can you see forming this compound? Because this is a compound now. So how many elements can you see forming this compound? How many? Two. Hydrogen and chlorine. So what is the atomic mass of each of the elements? That is something you must know. Now, hydrogen atomic mass is one. Chlorine atomic mass is 35.5. It is something you must know. You've seen it now. You don't need to forget it another time. Are you getting me now? So whenever you're asked, what's the atomic mass of hydrogen? What will you say? One. What's the atomic mass of chlorine? 35.5. So how do you calculate relative mass, relative molecular mass of this compound? You simply come here and say R-O-M-M. What is R-O-M-M? Relative molecular mass. Now, to do that, it is very easy. I simply write the compound again. And what is the atomic mass of hydrogen class? One. So I write here, one. Are you getting me now? So there's something used to separate them, or there's a symbol or a sign to use to separate them. After writing for one, you simply write plus. Are you getting me now? So this is chlorine. And what's the atomic mass? 35.5. So what becomes the relative molecular mass of hydrochloric acid? What was it? 1 plus 35.5. And what's that? 36.5. Hope is clear. So that is how it works. So quickly write it down. Okay, guys. You can see the next compound written on the board. Now, this compound is popularly called glucose. Or it is the chemical formula of glucose. And glucose is a sugar. Now, for we to say glucose is a sugar, what class of food will you think glucose will be under? Glu Very nice. Glucose will be called what? A carbohydrate. Or you just say carbs. That's the short form of carbohydrate, carbs. So glucose is a what? A carbohydrate. Now, looking at this chemical formula or looking at this compound, let us analyze this. Analyze it. Now, what's C? What element is C class? Carbon. How many atoms of carbon can you see here? Six. How many molecules of carbon can you see here? One. I told you guys that for we to get a molecule at all, how many atoms do we need? Just at least two atoms. So if it is three, four, five, six atoms forming it, you still call it one molecule. So how many atoms of carbon do we have here now? How many atoms of carbon? Six. How many atoms of carbon? Six. How many molecules of carbon? One. How many atoms of hydrogen? Twelve. How many molecules of hydrogen? One. How many atoms of oxygen? Six. How many molecules? One. Because for we to get a molecule, we need at least two atoms. So even if it's 30, it's still one molecule of that particular element. Hope it's clear. So that is for that. So let us solve together. This is carbon. And what's the atomic mass of carbon class? Twelve. So underneath carbon, we write it. C, C, H, 12, O, 6. So underneath carbon, it becomes 12. Now, you can say that there's 6 down. You simply, whenever you see a particular element having a number, you times. So it's going to be 12 times 6. That is for carbon. Hope it's clear. 12 times 6. So the next thing to write is your word plus, as seen here. So when I write 12 times 6, what should I write next? Plus. What's the atomic mass of hydrogen? 1. 1 times 12. Hope it's clear. Next, what should I write? What symbol? Is it minus or plus? Plus. What about oxygen? What's the atomic mass? 16. 16 times 6. Yes, now? 16 times 6. So let us press our calculator and get the answer. What is 12 times 6? 72. Plus 1 times 12? 12. Plus 16 times 6? 96. So relative molecular mass, when you add everything, get 180. So what is the relative molecular mass of glucose class? 180. Hope it's clear. 
So I'll be giving the next compound here, and you guys will be solving it for me. And it's, it's going to be a, a very popular compound, and this compound is an acid. They call it H2SO4. I'm going to give you the atomic masses. Hydrogen is always what? One. Now, what is oxygen class? 16. What should we solve for? 32. It's something you must know. So, I will call on one person to help us solve the relative molecular mass of this compound. Okay, so she will be helping us to solve for the relative molecular mass of H2SO4. So let's see what she'll be doing. So all that person should be solving in their respective notes. Class, is she correct? Yes. She's actually very correct. So let's clap for her.